a lot of people don't know the, the translation. And I get a kick listening to that song in Safeway in Kaneohe, playing over the mic or the speakers, and nobody really understands what they're saying. Don't sign the paper of the enemy with its sin of annexation and loss of civil rights. It's like, wow. <laughs> but what's important though is, look how long that song has lasted. The lyrics were the same, but the melody changed. And the melody changed to continue the singing. It was disguised as if it was a hula song. Yeah? So pretty heavy. You know, it's just one aspect of Hawaii's history that we didn't know. Yeah, we didn't know. So they created the Territorial Act, Congress, and um, all they did was change the head and adding insult to injury. Sanford Dole, the lead insurgent from the Republic, the traitor, he now becomes pres uh, governor of the territory of Hawaii. This began, this began the legacy of what came to be known as the Big Five, okay? And it wasn't good to live in Hawaii at that time because the Big Five was directly connected to the military. And you folks may have heard of the Massey case, yeah? All those things. I remember my grandmother, my tutu, actually my nana, my, my dad's side, when everything was hitting the fan with me, which I, you're gonna see, you know, because I tend to create trouble. I don't know why. I just, <laughs> And say it for has no clothes on. <laughs> Why everybody getting pissed off? <laughs> See, everybody thought I was crazy back then. Now I said, well, according to Dr. Sai, the emperor has no clothes on. <laughs> I still say the same thing. <laughs> now, she told me something when everything was hitting the fan with me. She says, you know, Ken, you know what your problem is? I said, no, nah, no, what's my problem? She goes, you know too much. She said, when I grew up, the least you know, the better you off. That was the window into that time, the Massey era. My, two, my nana was born in 1915. That was that time. But I told my nana, nana, don't worry, I can handle. I'm a retired captain, I, I, I can handle pressure. Yeah? I don't walk into fights, I don't lose. I walk into fights, I don't win. You know? And then sometimes it's best to lay low. You know? And she goes, just be careful. I said, yeah. Well, everything hit the fan and we're gonna see some of that. <laughs> and then, you had the Statehood Act of 1959. So the United States Congress changed the name from the territory to now a state, but it's still a U.S. law. And then the Apology Resolution, 1993, they apologized. And you know the Apology Resolution? I gotta say it was deliberately worded to reinforce the confusion. Because they, they used such words as Native Hawaiians, as if only Natives were affected. The country was multi-ethnic. Multi yeah, you could be Hawaiian and be Chinese. Because Hawaiian is a nationality, short for Hawaiian subject. Like British is a nationality, short for British subject. But you can be black, Japanese, Chinese, and still be British. Same thing in Hawaii. You know, that's how it was. Now, they also use the word in there, inherent sovereignty, self-determination. All of those terms apply to you're not sovereign yet. And you're similar to Native Americans who are fighting for their rights which ought to be led to the Akaka Bill. Yeah. And all of that is all wrong. It's all wrong. A lot of sovereignty groups was hanging their hats on all that stuff. That only reinforces the problem. Yeah. But bottom line is, the annexation, the apology resolution is a joint resolution, no different than the annexation resolution, which is limited to US territory. Still doesn't apply here. Yeah. So the apology law has nothing to do with Hawaii. The Statehood Act has nothing to do with Hawaii because what you need is a treaty. So what we have in the Hawaiian Kingdom, these are Hawaiian laws. Okay? The Civil Code, the Criminal Code, and the Compound Laws. These are the laws that regulated and constrained Queen Liliuokalani in her administration of government. She was not some absolute monarch. And did you know in the Hawaiian Constitution, since 1852, it specifically says, no one shall sit upon the throne who has been convicted of an infamous crime insane or an idiot. I'm not even making that up. That's straight from the Constitution. And before the, a person can be a successor, they have to be confirmed by the nobles. Yeah. So Commander the Third nominated his adopted son, Alexander Lihulio, as his successor. The nobles had to confirm. And what the nobles would determine in order to confirm is whether or not he's an idiot, He's insane, or was he convicted of an infamous crime? And if he was, any of the three or a combination, they don't confirm. 
So that shows that Queen Lili Okalani, who was nominated and confirmed, met that threshold. And she was very Akamai. Very Akamai. I am glad a woman was in charge in 1893. Yeah, because if it was a guy, hey, take on the Marines. You know, like play Tantara, no? You know, Boko guys. Play Tantara. You guys know where Tantara came from, right? Tantara is not Filipino. That's not the Nandawan. Dinner one. Yeah. Tantara comes from the old Superman movies. Tantara. So when locals say, no play Tantara, no play Superman. The Lee Kalani was a superwoman, but she never played Tantara. She knew how the game was played. Because she had experience in running government. She served as a regent when her brother was traveling around the world to secure Hawaii's, ensure Hawaii's recognition. She was running government. Very, very Akamai. Good people surrounding her. After 1887, the bayonet, problems. So when she assumed office in 1891, she walked into a hornet's nest. That's what she did. Yeah. But I have a lot of respect for Queen Didi Bokalani. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, American laws do not apply in Hawaiian territory, and Hawaiian laws do not apply in American territory because it's separated by international law. Now, it's very important to know that's why Hawaii was recognized as an independent state, because if Hawaii wasn't recognized as an independent state, then these laws can apply to this territory, which is what the apology law implies. So, what you need here is a bridge. A bridge is called a treaty. For all these laws to be here, there's no bridge, except for the executive agreements that settled the overthrow and obligated the United States to reinstate that government. And you see that all in the newspapers. But a lot of us don't know what's in the newspapers because it's in Hawaii. But it's also in the English newspapers too. Did you know it's even in the Japanese newspapers? The Portuguese newspapers. It was all part of the kingdom. You know, it wasn't like a bunch of natives in the corner. This was multi-ethnic. So what we have here, states. States are countries. And under international law, States have equal rights okay, and are co-equal members. So although Hawaii was small, it was equal to the United States. Okay. Give you an example of a state that is equal, okay, and it's smaller than Hawaii, Luxembourg. Yeah, Luxembourg. Luxembourg, just between France and Germany. And that was a neutral country. Did you know that they are comprised of 990 square miles? The Hawaiian Kingdom is 10,000 square miles. Luxembourg is the size of Oahu. Liechtenstein, another independent state, is the size of Morocco. Now for us, as, as, uh, which are different from them in Europe, see, they're landlocked, right? They're landlocked. We are sea-locked. That means that we not only have 10,000 square miles of land, you also can include 200 miles off the coast of each island called the Exclusive Economic Zone. You can also include in that the 12-mile territorial seas off of each island. That is a very big country. Very big country. So when you keep it in context, you're going, wow, pretty cool. And you know, for Hawaii to have over 90 embassies and consulates all over the world, that's impressive, you know. Very impressive, because the only reason why you have embassies is you are um, um, tied directly to that government. Okay? That's why it's always in there their uh, capitals. But consulates are not in capitals, per se. Consulates are all over the country where that particular country has economic trade yeah, or nationals themselves living there. The fact that we had over 90 of them there, wow, that kind of tells you Hawaii is involved with trade and commerce. So now go back to 1893, they changed the, the dry book. Guess what they took over? One souped up cup. But they made us all think it wasn't souped up. They made it seem like we was uncivilized. You know, that's the, that's the propaganda. Yeah. Now states are represented by governments in the exercise of their rights and duties, which is what we cover. And states are politically independent of each other and exercise complete sovereignty over its territory and personal supremacy over its citizens abroad. They still have authority over their nationals when they travel. Now according to Professor Crawford, leading expert in state sovereignty, there is a strong presumption that the state continues to exist with its rights and obligations despite revolutionary changes in government or despite a period of which there is no or no effective government. So again, even Professor Crawford admits a state can continue to exist even though its government is gone. And occupation 
does not affect the continuity of the state, even when there exists no government claiming to represent the occupied state. These are important principles to understand in this game called football. These are just rules of football. We didn't know these rules because we thought we was playing baseball. These are the rules of football that even the United States knows. So when you start talking, you got to talk the same language, otherwise you sound kind of confusing. It's like somebody talking uh, uh, baseball, football together one time. Now a presumption is a conclusion based upon facts. An assumption is a conclusion without facts. You guys got that? That's why I remember I was in the Army National Guard one time and one colonel told me, hey, Lieutenant, you never assume. Because when you assume, make one ass out of you and me, assume. You know? He said, no. So, I, so he taught me, okay, sir, I'll get back to you with that information. Don't just make it up. You know? No. So a presumption is very important regarding a country. So when you are presumed innocent you know, in a criminal trial, that means that you are innocent until proven guilty, meaning you don't prove your innocence. The other party has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt overwhelming evidence, you're guilty. That's how it's supposed to work, because the presumption of innocence is a conclusion based upon the facts that the person has rights. That's, what, that's where it's come from. So if a state has rights, then a state is presumed to still exist, right? And the state did exist, so therefore it can be presumed to still exist today until evidence shows to the contrary. A joint resolution is not evidence of extinguishing the Hawaiian Kingdom. Make sense? So, presumption of continuity. Hawaii a recognized independent state in the 19th century, so presumably Hawaii today remains a sovereign but occupied state. Since international law provides for the presumption of continuity of the state, that's what it does, provides for the, for the presumption of continuity, unless the United States extinguished Hawaii's sovereignty under international law, which only recognizes treaties and not U.S. laws enacted by the Congress. So the question then is, nothing about Congress. Did Hawaii get annexed by a treaty, whether by conquest or voluntary? Show me the treaty. See, that's the new hashtag, show me the treaty. Yeah. No more treaty. There is no treaty. So Hawaii today remains a sovereign but occupied state. Now that just threw everything we thought out the window. That means everything we believe was a lie. It was. And I had to get, and I to, had to get over that. I was called collateral damage. I'm, I'm a captain getting ready to become a promotable to major. With this information, that's called major disaster. <laughs> I loved in the military. I like firing artillery rounds. You know, you train, you like fight, you like go to war. I had no problem with that. The problem I had is I might die for a country, not mine. Now I got a problem. Because now I'm thinking about my uncles in Vietnam. Yeah. Korea, World War II, World War I. Who now is getting serious. This is not about sovereignty. This is about who. Oh, this is me now. This is me. I'm like, oh, got to make some decisions. That's when I retired. Uh, decided to re retire. Resign after 10 years. Yeah. Still got friends in it. You know. A friend of mine, Alan Ho. Vietnam vet, yeah, wounded in uh, Vietnam. His son, I know, got killed in Iraq. Yeah. I know Alan very well. Alan went to the Netherlands to witness a World Court case, which I'll be getting into later. He came back home and he was telling his friends, who are the attorneys, about what he saw and what he witnessed, and he was blowing his mind, the kingdom exists, it's a country. And they asked him, this is him telling you the story, they asked him, how do you reconcile what you say now with the fact that you was injured in Vietnam and got the Purple Heart. And you know what Alan told him? I was a mercenary. And I was a damn good one. That was his way to reframe it. And that's powerful. That was his way of reframing it. Yeah. And that's Alan Home. So from this premise, Hawaii being occupied, okay, and its continuity is there, the Hawaiian Islands have been under an illegal occupation. Therefore, consequently, the state of Hawaii government, being an entity created by the U.S. Congress, is an illegal regime without lawful authority. Oh. If this, then that. I'm not going to pick and choose. I'm just going to call it. 
That means that every state of Hawaii official is illegal, including me teaching at Wilmer Community College because I collect money. I get paid by the state who has been collecting taxes, but it's not taxes because that's not a government. That's called pillaging. That's called theft. Oh, now we're getting into some problems because all of a sudden, now my butt is getting heated. And once you make this history relevant to your pocketbook and yourself is when it becomes real. Because now you got to take ownership of the information. And now when you take ownership of the information, how do we fix this problem? Because I am not a traitor. I am not an insurgent. I was ignorant. Yeah. I never know. I never know. Okay, now I know. Well, now I got to watch what I say. Okay, but I get my PhD, so I have people try to refute me. They cannot, so now they know too. <laughs> now I'm going to teach class, now everybody knows. <laughs> I'm going to sit on doctoral committees. Now I'm going to make sure they know. <laughs> Let everybody know. Yeah? This is the reality check, but it's for real. This is not a game. There's some major consequences, because Hawaii is not just what, we, what happens here stays here. Hawaii is still a part of the global economy. So if everything here is illegal, then what about those foreign nationals paying taxes in Hawaii? That's a direct violation of their treaties. Did you know they can now go after the United States government to get that money back? That has nothing to do with us. What about all the military installations in Hawaii that was established here? 20% of the islands, 230,000 acres controlled by the military, 118 military sites. I was in it. We just got used to it. Now we got desensitized. Yeah. Let's say I'm, I'm Russia. The biggest thorn in my side is Pacific Command. Because they're now messing, and China. The biggest thorn in my side is Pacific Command. Because of the South China Seas. They're pushing their weight on me. All of a sudden, hey, wait a minute. Where you at? Where's your headquarters? Oh, Oahu. Oahu, show me it's part of the United States. Oh, no more treaty. That's occupation. And you occupy a neutral territory. Now, I can use that against you. See, it's all out of our hands. Once you start to get educated, people start to move on their own interests. And I'm not one to promote chaos. I'm just here to explain our situation. Remember, remember don't shoot the mailman for delivering the mail. Just go read the letters. You don't like it, go fill the gold with water. Trust me, I used to be there, I was a little angry. Now I'm okay. You know, and it's okay to be angry. You just frustrated, because I used to be frustrated too. Get more water. Because right now, we're not the insurgency. Yeah? And all of us are all victims of circumstance. So don't try to act like you're an insurgent. Because they're not going to hold you accountable. Because even though they die, I'm going to hold you accountable. So whatever you say, can and will be used against you. Be careful what you say now. Yeah? Now it's a matter of where do you get the information? How do you get the answers? That's why it was important for me to get my degree. It was important for me to get it in political science, a PhD. So I'm not pushing Hawaiian. This is law. This is history. I don't care if you're from Mars. Same history you know, when you come here. So the laws that apply during Hawaii's occupation include international laws of occupation, international humanitarian law, and Hawaiian Kingdom law, not United States law. They don't apply here. The Hawaiian Kingdom's existence as an independent state, that's the presumption. That's not the argument. So I'm not arguing with you the kingdom exists. It exists. You show me it doesn't. Yeah. So all I'm here is telling you this is a remote control. This is what it looks like. I'm sorry you think it's a hat. No, it's not a hat. It's a remote control. But can I borrow that? I got to do a presentation. Okay, you can put it back on your head, but it's not a hat. Take my class. I'm going to teach you it's a remote control, and you're going to see how you can use it. Yeah? How you can benefit from it. And that's how you play this. This is called Ho'oponofono. How you reframe things. So when, when uh, Alan Ho said, I was a mercenary. And I'm a damn good one. That was his way of reframing that experience he had in Vietnam. That way he's not angry. That was his way of reframing it. That, that's him. That was all him. And that's heavy. That's something we got to think about because all of us have to figure out how to reframe it. Yeah? I tell my wife I'm never wrong. You know, I'm never wrong. You guys know that, right? I'm never wrong. I'm never wrong. I'm just temporarily off track. <laughs> so nobody's wrong. You just temporarily off track. Get back on track. You get back on track. Information. Yeah? So I'm not into judging people. Yeah? The burden of proof to provide the argument 
and evidence on international law that the Hawaiian Kingdom no longer exists as a state is with the United States, not with any of you, not with me. International law is between countries, not between individuals. So it's the United States that has a responsibility to show that Hawaii was part of the United States. Kind of difficult though, especially in known records. That's why you notice uh, Dr. Kamana Okono from OVA, the letter to Secretary of State Kerry. Just show that Hawaii is a part of the United States so we're not committing war crimes. Wouldn't you think he would come out real quick? He said, frivolous, Hawaii is a part of the United States, here's a treaty. You don't hear nothing. <laughs> All you hear is Hawaii screaming at each other called trustees with Kamanao and the people yelling at the trustees who's pissed off because Kamanao asked the question. You see how crazy this looks? What did Kamanao do that was wrong? Ask the question. He just asked the question. He didn't, he didn't pick a side. He just said, can you please show me evidence that Hawaii is part of the United States? And then you got the Department of Interior hearings coming down. Oh my God, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't go to any of them, I was watching them on TV. But you know what I saw though? I didn't see it from the people's perspective. I saw it from the reaction of the panel. Because what they were receiving was emotional rage of true anger. Because now we know. And what I also saw from the people, education. I saw Kupuna talking, a joint resolution cannot annex nothing. Oh, Auntie. <laughs> Fill the board, fill the board. There was some swishing going on in the hearings, a lot of swishing, but there's plenty of water to fill the board. Now what I like also, you had people other than Native Hawaiians talking. That was it. And that is a sign of education. So therefore, in the absence of any such evidence on international law, the Hawaiian Kingdom continues to exist as an independent and sovereign state. But it doesn't have a government, because that was overthrown illegally in 1893.